Voice of the Sea, learning from experts across the ocean. Welcome to Voice of the Sea. In this episode, we travel to the Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology, located on the windward side of Oahu on Moku Oloe, also known as Coconut Island. The Institute is a world leader in research to understand and conserve tropical marine ecosystems. And in recent years, the Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology has integrated itself into the community, working with local volunteers, schools, and members of the public. Education programs led by Dr. Malia Rivera focus on providing rigorous and authentic research experiences for high school and college students. Educational specialist Mark Heckman leads programs for younger students, school groups, and the community. We traveled to the Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology aboard the new education boat, where visitors participate in plankton tows. You guys know this, the importance of this side of the island, right? The, this was the center of pretty much of Oahu, because this was all the food growing was on this side of the island. I wouldn't trade this side of the island living here for anything in the world. And this bay, it's going to be the lead bay for coral reef research in the world, I think. Because we have all these little patch reefs that come up, and so they're like little experimental units that we can monitor and see the changes as we try things in the bay to bring the bay back. And the fish ponds are coming back online too. Look over there, Pai Pai is coming online, and Waikalua down there is coming slowly back online. Education specialist Mark Heckman and his students are preparing the plankton net for collecting and identifying the microscopic organisms that form the base of the ecosystem in Kaneohe Bay. This is the bridle up front. We obviously want to attach the line to the bridle. That's what Kay he was doing here. Okay, so now we're attached, this is good. You will notice that there's nothing on the end of the net. So we need a cod end on that. I'll bring that up. And you're gonna put on the cod end. Okay. So gently screw that. Do you know about counter threading? Whatever, she just did that perfectly. So when you pitch it out the back, you hold onto it like this, you kind of throw it out. Somebody else is gonna be holding the line and they'll give enough slack that it can get out past the motor and hit. And they just hold onto the line to let this thing bag out to make sure it's not all wrapped up or anything. Don't throw it until we say to. Look at where the line is relative to your feet. Yep. Do you see any issues there? Yeah. If we wanna know the volume of this, we need to know the speed and the time. If you look at this thing, when we drag this through the water, what sort of shape are we dragging through the water? A cone or a circle? Cone. 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 Circle? Think about that circle dragging through the water. It's going to create actually a column, right? Even though the net goes down, you're dragging that circular shape through, right? So you're creating a cylinder. So all we need to know is the height of the cylinder, which we can get from speed versus time and then we can get the volume. When we hit it, run around six minutes, give us a warning, we'll start pulling it up. When it clears the water, we stop. Okay? When it hits the water, you start. Are you ready? No. Okay. You may deploy upon... Okay, look and see what it's doing. Okay, start letting it out, hand over hand. You can go pretty fast. Are we doing this once more? We're ready to go. Good job. So now you guys can relax for a little bit until the warning to start pulling it back up. The length of time that we run this for is really just based on how thick the plankton are in the area that you're you're working with. Oh, don't worry about that end, the other end, this stuff. You don't have to be neat about it, just dump it. Okay, bring this to right here. Now just hold it. You got a good grip on it? Oh, bonk. Hold it out a ways. 
You can grab it now. You can grab in here like that, yeah. Now you're gonna unscrew that. Give it a good swirl, get all the stuff up, and then dump all at once. Go. If you guys want to take a look at it while it's in its uh, raw state there, you can see we caught a fair amount of stuff. So what you're seeing there are the zooplankton mostly. These are the animal plankton based on what the net was picking up. We got phytoplankton as well, but they're they're so small that it's not gonna show up too well. The phytoplankton are the ones that are producing the oxygen. Now that we have our sample, we'll take a look under the microscope to more closely observe what was caught in the plankton toe. University of Hawaii's Sea Grant College program focused on Hawaii's coasts and its communities through sustainable development, safe seafood supply, sustainable coastal tourism, hazard resilience, and healthy coastal ecosystems. Hawaii's Sea Grant. the Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology with the students from the Kulia Marine Biology Club. Looking at plankton under the microscope and sorting through the invasive alga Gracilaria, which is also known as Gorilla Ogo, to find the types of creatures living there and what they might tell us about the health of Kaneohe Bay. On that count, I want to I want to know if you find any marrow plankton. Just put a little hash mark for any marrow plankton you find, that would be the things that are going to grow up to be something else. And then within the view plane, how many holoplankton are in that same area that you can see through the thing, all right? That's his data, that'll turn into a data table. Whoa. Wait, we swim with Yes. <laughs> I've seen a lot of copepods. I've seen some crab larvae. Um, I think we've seen a couple of fish eggs, clam. Okay, so this is the Julia Marine um, Science Club. And so it reaches out to students and it prepares them to become a scientist and teaches them uh, research and as well as different opportunities that we have. And who is eligible to become part of the Kulia program? Any high schooler between 9th and 12th grade, yeah. And yeah, we got a lot of different people coming in. And what are the requirements if you want to be part of the program? I would just say be open-minded and be interested in science. So we come once a week for about two and a half to three hours, depending on what we're doing that day. Yeah. And you guys are working on long-term projects as well as sort of um, days where you get to do something special or different? Yeah, so I think in the beginning, um, maybe like for the first half, kind of, we did a lot of just learning about everything. We did plankton labs, algae labs, just a lot of different labs so that we could kind of see the ocean as a whole and everything that's happening in it. But now we're kind of changing, I don't know, doing more <laughs> field work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you guys come out here about once a week? Mm -hmm. Once a week. Yeah. And how long have you been doing that? I've been doing it since last year, which was the start of this program. I've only been coming since this past October. Yeah. And how did you guys find out about it? Well, they reached out to our high school, and so from a science teacher, we got the advertisement. And this is your own time, it's not for a grade or yep. anything like that? Yeah. So we just wanted to see what it was like. This club really inspired me to be some sort of scientist, uh, scientist and go into like research. 
because from this, like, we got ideas of projects for conservation. So it taught me a lot of different aspects of what kind of um, scientists there are. What are you guys doing on Snorkel? We learned about the different methods of reef monitoring. There's like this technique that we're doing now. It's called 3D mapping. So it's basically where we take like a camera uh, with a, uh, it's a nice camera with the underwater housing. And so then we just take multiple shots from like different views. And so then you put it into like a software program, it compiles it and it basically creates like a 3D image and you can like rotate it. It's a really good use for maybe like long-term comparisons between reefs and stuff. So yeah, it's pretty cool. So these cards are to help you identify what you're finding inside the... Yeah, ex exactly. It, we just look at the, the description of the stuff and then we determine if this is a echinoderm or a... Oh, well, yeah, it's an echinoderm because it's a worm or an annelid. Oh, it's an annelid. It's an annelid. It's an annelid. <laughs> I've learned that uh, the whole marine biology like yeah. career has more to offer than just studying dolphins or studying whales and stuff. I didn't know any, anything about these actually before I started. What role are these invertebrates playing in Kaneohe Bay's ecosystem? Mm. Okay, that question has to do with um, what does that thing do? That's a filter feeder. See all the tentacles floating around in there? Those are spaghetti worms. They're detritus feeders. Um, the sea squirts, those are filter feeders. The sponges, filter feeders again. You guys got a sort of an unusual group of stuff. Usually you get way more of those clams, which are filter feeders, and way more sponges. So they kind of got, you kind of got an atypical distribution here. So a more common distribution of this would have looked like this. Oh. Oh my gosh. Right? And it would have looked like this. Here's your sea squirts rolling in. So these are all sea squirts, more filter feeders. So when you look at the bay, it's providing a substrate for filter feeding organisms. And then you would have more of this too. The sponge. Right? All filter feeders. All cleaning up the bay that we have over nutrified. So we over nutrify the bay. You get filter feeders. In fact, in the old days, there used to be clam beds, and everybody would go clamming in Kaneohe Bay. And I suspect that when we cleaned up the bay a little bit, the clam beds went away. Oh, sure. Researchers tend to be very particular about their experiments. You know, if you're going to publish something, and especially if you've got a long-term experiment running, think about two or three years, and all of a sudden someone comes and sticks their hand in the tank not knowing anything, and boom, there goes your publication and your grant money and all that stuff. So I see that. And of course, we, you know, have an orientation. We tell, you know, everyone to not stick your hand in, in the tank or do anything without permission because we don't want to do just that. Today, you can't do science without doing education. They are coupled. Um, uh, totally. It's, we, it is no, you no good to do science without passing it on to someone else. How come? And it, because, well, you think about science is, is a search for knowledge and facts and truth, and, and especially if you're going to apply that science, you want, to, to, you want people to know why it's important. And, and for these kids, you know, this is potentially the next generation of, of biologists, a marine biologist here. It's the next generation of conservation biologists, advocates. Um, it could also be your next accountant or attorney, and that's fine too, because from my perspective, I want to teach everyone, especially the ones who may not be scientists. This is their reef. This is their ocean. They're going to grow up, and you know, if they continue to live here, it's, it's theirs to protect. They don't get a grade for being here every week. They don't. They don't. I, I can't give them the grade for school. Um, you know, they're 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 here because they want to. They're here because they're interested. I I lead the program. Um, Mark is our uh, you know primary advisor, and Leon, of course, uh, Leon's my right arm and my left arm. The research that's taking place out here is extremely important. The Gates Lab is working on trying to develop a more robust coral that can survive changing ocean conditions and changing climates. I've never had 
an opportunity like this when I was in high school. And it seems from the feedback that I've received from our students that it's something that they're really interested in. And it's evident by the fact that this is a voluntary program. They don't have to show up. There's no consequences if they don't show up. But week after week, they keep coming back and they keep asking to, to get into the water. It's something that they could do anywhere. There are many, many excellent snorkeling spots throughout um, Oahu that are nicer than, than uh, what we have in Kaneohe Bay, but they like the experience with it. That gives me more incentive to, to want to keep this going and to reach out to other schools um, to see more participation with the Windward High Schools in the area. Okay. There's a thing on the other side, right there. Focus on that. Yeah. What the heck is that? That's the one, that's the fish hook one. The Curriculum Research and Development Group in the College of Education at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. CRDG's training routes go back over 40 years. Through professional development programs, curriculum workshops, research on teaching methodology, individualized school and district training, and so much more. The Curriculum Research and Development Group, improving schools, improving education. CRDG. We're talking with education specialist Mark Heckman about the importance of integrating education into the research program at the Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology as we seek to cultivate future leaders. This place, remember, Kaneohe Bay was where food production was. This was the center of, of power and of, of life on Oahu. This was a very important area. And so we don't know much about the prehistory. We don't know really much of anything about you know, pre-contact history of this island, but it had to have significance. It's in too important of a place. So I provide access to the island for any community group that wants to come out. If there's a family group that wants to come out, that's what my program does. Uh, elementary schools that come out, they tend to go through my programs. And then I'll pick up a few of the high schools, a few of the um, colleges, a few of the week-long programs, a few teacher workshops, so anywhere I see a need. So you're telling me that as a teacher, as a parent, as a the community group, I can go on to your website and contact you guys and like book a trip and actually come out to the Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology and learn about the research that's happening here. Sure, when are you coming? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't advertise it, or I don't strongly advertise it because I really do want it to be local first. Now we do have a fee structure. I look at what people might pay for a movie and I charge less than that. And this is so much more amazing than going to a movie. I've not had any really disgruntled people, clients <laughs> that said, oh, I had to pay $10 to come out for a boat ride and a two hour tour, you know, that's, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. What is it that people are going to learn when they come out right. here? We have a couple of programs. One of the core ones for families and stuff is simply a walking tour. You would come out, if you come out on a weekday, you come out on one of the boats. If it's a big group, you're gonna use our larger boats. Small group, probably one of the smaller boats. We'll walk around the island, we'll stop at the various research sites that'll include like the shark pens and our touch coral research table. We'll try to translate some of the science that goes on here because the scientists here are doing, I kind of call it management-based research, problem solving. They look at problems out there and they go, we've got all these creative, young, new researchers. We've got all these cool new tools. What are the solutions we can find to these problems? For school groups then, we do labs, hands-on labs. And the most basic one is they'll do a plankton toe on the way over, they do a plankton lab, and then they look at an invasive clump of invasive seaweed and they tease out what organisms live in that. So they start to learn how to do science. They start to learn how to do a numeric characterization of a habitat. Those are kind of my basic programs, and then we specialize off from that. We do marine science overnights. This is, I mean, to spend the night on Mokoloi, this is very nice. They camp. 
they do a night plankton lab. They make light traps out of recycled materials and use colored lights and do hypothesis testing, put the light traps down and collect plankton and, and see what they get. They're going to be some of the best prepared high school students going into an undergraduate situation that you can find. They're getting training that any student at any school in the world would just die for. It's really high quality. And that's happening for our local public school students here in Conway. With our partners. We have the wonderful support of all our partners. Always looking for new opportunities to both do science but also get them into nature. This is the only marine research station in the world where a researcher can be in their lab walk out, be on a live coral reef. There's tiger sharks in the bay. There's all kinds of life in the bay. They can come back up. We have the, the top equipment here. So these students coming up have this ability. It's almost cliche. We talk about changing the world. They're going to. They're going to be living in times when changes are happening anyway, and they're going to be able to make big changes. And I'm I'm optimistic, the researchers here are optimistic that they can deal with these changes given the tools that we'll be giving them. Yes, we love the community come out. We'd love for them to see what we're doing. We'd love for them to add in their ideas. We're always open. And the youth that are coming up, or if somebody older wants to retrain and go into the sciences, that's exciting too. Come and learn the tools, go out, change the world. What the heck? <laughs> Ultimately, our kids are gonna be the next leaders of science in Hawaii and I think the world. Kaneohe Bay is exceptional. In this bay now we have so many groups working together. We have the cultural groups working together. We have the science groups working together. Pooling our knowledge, taking traditional ecological knowledge, Western ways of, of looking at things, putting these worldviews together so that this next generation will be truly creative in how they move forward. Creative and ethical, I think. So it's a pretty exciting place to be. Exploring Our Fluid Earth is a dynamic curriculum developed by the University of Hawaii's Curriculum Research and Development Group. Teaching ocean science concepts through the disciplines of physics, chemistry, biology, and ecology. Exploring Our Fluid Earth is now available freely online. Find out more at exploringourfluidearth.org. University of Hawaii Sea Grant College Program. Helping coastal communities of Hawaii and the Pacific. Through research, education, and outreach. Serving the community, from elementary to graduate students. Hawaii Sea Grant. oceans are critical to our cultural, economic, and environmental sustainability in Hawaii. The ocean serves as a source of water, food, medicine, jobs, transportation, recreation, and energy. It controls climate and weather. Kosi Island Earth aims to share this ocean awareness by partnering with local scientists and educators to engage communities and schools in active science learning for an ocean literate population. Kosi Island Earth is working to establish new avenues for connecting research scientists with educators and communities. Kosi Island Earth is enhancing the science and ocean literacy of our island residents and visitors. Kosi Island Earth is connecting scientific research, traditional knowledge, and ocean policy. Kosi Island Earth, bringing together university, government, research, and community partners to improve science education and ocean stewardship in Hawaii.